Adam Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today in the early automotive history, friend of the channel as well as historian, Alan Travis. Alan, what year make and model is this one? This is a 1906, 1907 Stevens Durier Model U Light 6, 360 cubic inch, big, really large six cylinder. They made one larger. This is the smaller one. None of the larger ones remain. Let's take a look at our featured attraction. None of the other ones remain. How many of these did they make? 10? I think they may, may, may have made 20 of them. Very expensive car, $4,000. Wow. $4,000 would have bought you eight uh, small common homes. So the only people, we'll talk about this when we get to the trunk and treats, but the history of this car and the people who've had this car, absolutely amazing. Tell me what kind of headlights do we have here? These are the brass acetylene uh, headlights. So there's, there's, a, there's a flame that goes inside there, gets amplified by the lens on the backside, and it's got a carbide generator as well as it's got a acetylene tank that's underneath the back seats. Okay. Stevens was a manufacturer that made automobiles and probably the earliest production uh, company in America making automobiles. They made their own engines, their own uh, frames, as well as uh, their own bodywork. So this is really a Stevens Durier throughout. And as we take a look, let's uh, pop the uh, hood on this one. We'll show both sides and then I'll kind of keep working around the car. If you happen to notice those headlights, that's because Alan does drive it occasionally. So this is a giant six cylinder motor, even though it's called the small six, 360 <laughs> cubic inch. Uh, I don't believe in America there was any six cylinders any earlier than this. Let me step alongside you, go ahead. So what do we have right here? That's a giant water pump with a power takeoff and the power takeoff turns the oil on on the, on the total loss tank on the dash. So that's really beautiful when it's polished, but that's a giant water pump. And then we have our, our gear mechanism here. What do we have here? This That's off the camshaft. So the camshaft spins the magneto. This is an early magneto car, so it does not use a battery at all for the automobile because it's got a magneto. It doesn't need any power. The magneto generates the power it needs. This is a starter generator, probably from 1914 to 1916. Uh, that was put on there a long time ago. A starter generator has a big leather belt, in this case a rubber belt, and it spins the flywheel. This is a three-point connection uh, transmission motor, so there's uh, no flywheel in between because it's one casting that's about eight foot long. That's the casting for the motor and the transmission, so there's no room for the flywheel, so it's on the front. God, and look at that fan belt too. That's amazing. All right, we'll close this side. Okay. that little bronze piece up front just for that so you don't scratch your paint. I'll go back to the body in a second. Let's open the other side. This side is the side that you open each every single time that you start it because you prime it. These are your primer cups. So you would simply fill those up with gasoline, open up each of the of the primers, close them back up again, and start the car. That gets that gas up to the to where it needs to be much quicker than the, than the thing that looks like a carburetor down here. Stevens Deary didn't believe in buying very many accessories, so there is no carburetor. This carburetor is simply there's a there's a there's a butterfly right here, but no carburetor, no gas here whatsoever. And then down on the bottom, there's a float system with with fuel. And there's no high speed and there's no mid range. It's only got uh, just one jet that's adjustable on the dash by this, and you adjust how much is coming out of that nozzle. So it's basically a fire hose, and you can adjust it. Doesn't get very good a mileage. It gets about 10 miles per gallon, but you can adjust it down. And on the ride today, you'll you'll see how smooth it runs. Right while we're right here, what's the uh, bronze box here? The bronze box is a carbide generator, not the cylindrical type that's normal. You put your, your pellets in here and your water in here, and the water drips on the pellets and creates a settling gas, and that's what we're using now for the headlights. Got it. I see that. There's our, there's our wire there. Okay. 
and and Stevens Durier Stevens was made um, Stevens part of the Durier was an armament company so the castings are very very pure aluminum they didn't use any zinc in their aluminum so the aluminums that Stevens Durier made you can even polish today there's no porosity so you can have an engine casting for and transmission that's eight foot long and still not have any cracks in it 115 years later well that's just amazing we're gonna start this show me what you have to do to start this i see you've got something in your hand what do you have this is primer gas okay because we're gonna put in the primers okay. since it doesn't have a carburetor it has a completely open to the atmosphere set of tubing we're gonna open up the gas Okay. You have to turn off the gas every time you stop it. So now we're going to put the, fill up the, the primers with fuel. And, and we need to do that because the carburetor, with however you, you consider it to be a carburetor, is three foot below the engine. So you're never going to get that, that mixture up to the, to the combustion chamber by hand cranking. And speaking of hand cranking, I see we have a hand crank, but you said this is 360 cubic inches, if I heard you right? Yeah, this is 360 cubic inches, six so, cylinder. So how do you compensate for trying to turn that over? Well, I, I can do it, but I it's really, really difficult. So we have a starter generator on here that's... Which is on the other side that we saw earlier. Got which, it. Which helps it. But it's a belt drive starter generator. So it's like starting your car by your alternator. So it doesn't sound like a starter, but it works like a starter. Yeah. So now we've got it primed, and we've closed up the primers. So now, just for clarity, you've got your switch here. Yep. You push on your end button, and your in button, so it's in the on position. You're yep. pushing in the clutch, you're stepping on the gas, and you've got a starter up here, okay. The starter button, so focus on the engine. I'm ready. Ready? Yeah. Shut that off. <laughs> now you shared with me this kind of an engine. It almost looks like a boat engine back in the day. I mean, that's a big engine. Individual cylinders too. All these cylinders are separate. They're on top of the aluminum casing. Yep. So you could, if you broke this cylinder, you could just put a new cylinder on. And what are these little... These are oilers for the for the valves. Okay. So there's little holes inside of here. So you put your plinket can, and every time you start it, I mean every morning when you're going to drive it, you would put plinket oil in here, which goes into the valve valve guides. Yeah, it's just absolutely beautiful. Now there was a four cylinder of this too, and this is the big one. Okay, yep. great. This is a six. All right, we'll close that. While you're closing that, I'm going to feature the side of the vehicle. And before I forget, I want to get that badge right there. And we have this horn right here. Now, I will tell you that we're not going to squeeze the horn on this one only because the horn bulb itself is crystallized. So it's there, but if we squeeze it, it'll crack like an egg. So we're not going to do that. Tell me about these lamps here. These are kerosene. So they're just a common marker light. It's 1907, so they have bail handles. So you can take it on and off very quickly. And you'd use this in your home. Most homes didn't have electricity back in 1906, 1907. So you could just put this on your mantle. What I see too is every one of these has the little Stevens Durier markings on them, including the headlights. That's yeah, great. unlike the other cars, every other car has different brands for the lights and all the accessories. Yeah. Virtually all the accessories for a Stevens Durier is made by Stevens Durier. Got it. Share with me what we have here. These are English Rudge Wentworth wire wheels. Uh, the only other car in 1907 that they used Rudge Wentworth wire wheels was the Rolls Royce. OK. 
Okay. So this is the only of the only one of the Stevens Duriers to have that. So it's a pretty easy card to identify. Come it's back. Also the come only. back. Come back with me for just a second. Okay. It's a little bit cloudy today, so when I got the light on it, I want to just share that real quick. We will go back to that to take a look at that. <laughs> That's glorious. Do me a favor. Stand, please stand by it. And then, yeah, I want to get your 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 duster. He's got the Stephen Durier duster on. All right, go ahead. Now tell me about the tire again, please. <laughs> That's great. So this, Where do you find something like that? I mean, you don't go to the uh, Montgomery Ward back in the day and get this. No, you. The owners made it back then at the time. Okay. So they were, everybody was really proud of the cars back then. Yeah. So the the tires. These are the original made cast from the original molds from 1907, uh, and these tires, as you can see. Have got lots and lots and lots of miles on them. They're white, so there's no polyester in them whatsoever. They are white rubber. White, white rubber is very, very soft. You can see how soft it is. Yeah. So that is rubber. That's a rubber tire. Modern tires aren't rubber. Got it. Oh, you got Firestone there. Okay, tell me a little bit about uh, the suspension too before we open up the uh, back seat here. The suspension is a. Uh, can be walk around this way to show more defined by the rear. Okay. Right now, the suspension, if the suspension pieces, if this was locked into the frame, we would have two or three inches of rear suspension. Got it. But because we have the, the, the third spring in the back, we have eight or nine inches of travel on each side. So this was an extremely nice luxury car suspension. Uh, not so good for sports car use, but, but for a uh, riding quality, it's really, really nice. Yeah. Got all of the writing there. I hope that the camera picks that up. Let's, uh, I mean, I kept kind of get out of the way of the sun, but I want to show the back of it. <laughs> Can you imagine in 1907 rolling down the road in this? And that differential, that's quite the piece there. At the time, most cars with big engines like this were chain drive. This is at, right at where it was transitioning to a rear end differential. Yeah. This differential is easy to work on because you can take that top cover off and adjust your gears and uh, inspect them and still have it go down the road if you need to. So it's a pretty nice way to design a rear end. And you've got the braking system here, which I can see. It's got inner and outer brakes. Very effective brakes for a, a two-wheel brake car. Uh, it's never been an issue for safety on this, even though it's got two-wheel brakes. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. And two-wheel meaning just the back brakes. Yes. Got it. But they're very, very high-quality rear brakes. Okay. Let's uh, let's open up the back seats. So we okay. go ahead. Show me. So this is original coach work by Steven Zurier. So we even have cabinets to keep our extra things in. Uh, this was a luxury car that had usually one or two footmen to drive it, although it could be an owner-driven car too. This was what they used in the back seat for a heater system. So a blanket. A blanket, and this would pull onto you. So when you're, the two passengers or three passengers could be really, really satisfied as far as heat. And you know, we have this in today's cars where they take the stitching. So when you get into your car, it has the car name or something like this. I wonder if it started back here in 1907 because this would have been a luxury car. So you could see how you've got this brass plate here and they, they could have just made it flat like this, but they made that nice stitching. And I want to just show you what it looks like from the back. Not only the seat and your glass, but when you're back here, you know, you're back here. Yeah, you've got, uh, I mean, that with that big top on it, you feel pretty special back here. Yep, and also you can tell it's a luxury car, too, because of the room to the back seat. Yeah. If it was a Model T, which wasn't made yet, another three years or so before they made Model Ts, we're very close coupled. Yes. We're trying to make it efficient. This is a giant amount of room, so you could even have a kid in the front, you know, you in the back seat, so you could have a whole family in the back here. And even I see you've got the 
grab handles here to hold on and things like that. Okay, let's, uh, I'll hop out. Tell me what these little, uh, which as I move out, tell me what these mats are that I'm standing. Is that some kind of, uh, looks like some kind of an animal hair or something. Yeah, I, I guess I should know, but I don't know what Probably kind. wool or something. All right, let's, uh, let me sit back up in here before we come back out again. All right, tell, first of all, let me show that front seat. And as I'm thinking about it, let's talk a little bit about this window. Let's come on this side one more time. Okay, this windshield is an automatic windshield, a really rare item to have in 1906, 1907. Let me just feature that piece right there in the center. Cars in this era didn't really need windshields because they went 25 or 30. This one shows in the owner's manual that it'd go 55 mile an hour. Right. So you could have it up like this, yeah. or you could fold it down, and you, you would fold this down, it'd be flat to here. Then these rods are adjustable, so I can adjust these rods in and out, so I can make it rakish. I, once it's folded down, I can have it folded down, so it's more of a rakish, more Got of it. a... Lean it back. Performance, or I can lean it forward. And with the top down and the, and the windshield up, I, I go 65 or 70 mile an hour. There would be no wind resistance. But even with an eight foot tall top, it'll still go 55 mile an hour like it sits now. So show this up here, this is interesting. So here you have your leather strap that holds it. You can see this is for the, for the top. To make it easier, they even design this so you could do your straps easy without hurting your knuckles. Then when you got all done, you would latch it in place. So just give it that extra tight pull so that your top stays so. I'm gonna go to the interior. Now, first of all, look at these great seats. These seats are a little more than you th originally think. Where's the gas go in this? Underneath this seat here. Okay, show me that if you would, please. So there's a little handle, which is really progressive. And then there's a hole and then there's your gas tank. Okay, you wouldn't have known that. All right, we'll close that back up. That's pretty cool. So your seat cushions in there. Now this is something that you wouldn't think that they had as I hop in. You wouldn't think that they had in 1907, but get ready for this one. Cup holders, a place to keep your valuables, your wine, or your drink. That's pretty cool. Alan, you've got your brass holders there, which gives you a real nice comfortable feel. Alan, what's in here am I looking at? It looks like this. your exhaust cut out where you keep your registration okay. and that kind of stuff. Got it. And your winder for your clock yep. and your power, power button. Got it. All right. So let's come around here. We start with, let me start with that. That's a Selden patent sticker. That means this company pay the Selden people to use their patents, usually that 2% of the value of the car. So that would have been $80 because it was a $4,000 car. Got it. And just before I forget, what's that little, looks like a... This uh, would hold your soda, uh, your soda extinguisher. Okay, so your fire extinguisher. Yeah, your, yeah. Got it. All right. This is your, your jetting. Mm -hmm. So you would, you, once you start it, when you start it, you're richen it up. Okay. And then as it starts, you lean it down as it warms up. Uh, this is your, your clock. That's your magneto. You can run on magneto or battery if you want. We have no battery in this one, so we just run it on magneto. Uh, that's our auxiliary light switch. This is our total loss oil box. So this holds about two quarts of oil. That's enough for 150 miles. And as we drive it, as you'll see, you'll see the drippers dripping oil as it's running. And right now we've got about uh, a third of that oil left in the box. There's our sight gauge. Okay, uh, clutch, gas is this shiny one, and brake on the right. Yep. It so is is this a brake too? That one is a brake also, the rear brakes, the emergency brake, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. And then the one to the far outside is your progressive three-speed transmission. Right there, so there's your transmission. Okay, now this is, this is special. Tell me about this. That's a hydraulic Veter speedometer, maybe a prototype. Uh, Mr. Curtis Veter was the owner of the car, the first owner, who created all the Veter instruments for the bicycles, and motorcycles, and cars. So that was an extremely modernistic speedometer for 1906-1907. Um, I've never seen another one. Maybe that was a prototype. Okay. 
Mr. So, so he put his own speedometer on there. Yep. Got it. And then Mr. Veter was an aviation. Uh, he loved aviation and what was happening in that. Glenn Curtis was making airplanes a, a little bit, and this steering wheel is the same thing that Glenn Curtis would use in his first airplanes from 1907. So Mr. Veter had a steering wheel made, uh, probably the only one in the world that was made, with an aircraft yoke. So you would put your hands there to steer the car. You'd also see that you had a timing here. You could advance and retard your timing. And then you had hand throttle, which is the big button, goes back and forth for a hand throttle. Um, so it never had a round steering wheel. This is difficult on a sports car drive, as you're going to see in the in the ride. But it's interesting. That is interesting. And that's this is the only car in the world to have that steering wheel at that time for sure. Yes. All right. So then we have. I'm going to call this our trunk of treats. So we're going to show you this, and then we'll just open that up. There's a few treats in there, and then we'll take you inside to show you some trunk and treats, and then we'll take it for a ride. So we've got this big tool here. Let's just put that in the light for a second. What is this for? That's to take your Rudge Wentworth rims off. That's, that's okay. how you... Okay, got it. That goes right here. I see. Okay, got it. This takes these off. Got it. Can I see that piece, please? This one. That's formidable. It's got some weight to it. All right. Got it. There's a few more items in there too, but show me two. the show me the other one. That's a pitchfork to see if you hit gold, so you can buy this thing. Another, and that's a three size pitchfork. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Okay. So this is probably all the big tools that you would need for the car. Right. Okay. All right, let's take them in to get some, uh, let's take them in and show them the trunk and treats. And so as we start the trunk and treats, I'm just gonna let people know we're gonna blush over these books, um, and then we'll show it in extended trunk and treats in the description of this video. But the important piece right now is why is this car important to you? It's important to me because Con Fletcher bought the car in 1965 or 66, had it till about 10 years ago, which was a couple years before his death, he had it on his gravestone. Wow. So uh, his wife's name was on the gravestone and his name was, but the giant picture in the center was this automobile. That's it amazing. was his absolute favorite car and it wasn't for sale, it was never for sale. I asked him and pleaded in a really nice way, uh, would you honor me to sell me that car and I'll continue its legacy. That's beautiful. Tell me about this picture right here. Who do we have here? This is Frank Durier. That's in my car. You can tell it's my car specifically because it's got the aviation steering wheel. Oh yeah. And it's the only one of those ever, ever made. So that's really neat. Frank Durier was the father of production for automobiles in America. He and his brother Charles, uh, they started making production vehicles, wagons, uh, motorized wagons in the 1890s. And I see him there. Yeah, Who this is, is with him? This is... Um, and in your car again. Yep, this is Curtis Veter. Curtis Veter was the first owner. He made all of the odometers and speedometers for bicycles and early motorcycles and early cars. Um, definitely a, a mover and a shaker for auto accessories. He ordered the car. He ordered the car with Rudge Wentworth wire wheels, which was more than a thousand dollar option. Mm -hmm. He also ordered it with the aviation steering wheel. And this is just a postcard from? That's when Winthrop Rockefeller owned it. That, um, he owned it with about 30 other cars too in his collection and he owned it till 1959. And then in 1959, there was a sale, and Bill Hara, probably the most important person in our hobby for preserving cars to make the hobby viable today, bought the car with another 30 or 40 um, percent of a Winthrop's collection. Uh, Bill Hara had it until 1967, until Con Fletcher bought it, and then I bought it about 10 years ago. Got it. We're going to talk about this in greater detail on our... Um extended cuts. We're also going to talk about each of these, but we've opened these up just so you can get an idea in 1907. Let's open that first page where the paper is. That's your car 
the model U right there. And look at even the side brochure that they're touring in the park. All right, we'll close that one. And then you're gonna see this in great detail. So I don't want you to feel that you're not gonna be able to see this, but we're featuring this car. And we'll just move that piece of paper so we can read that other page. And it even includes the trunk that's on, the, on our running board. That's the exact trunk that we have on our running board. It's been on that running board for 115 years. All right, and we'll go to the next book. Again, every one of these you'll see in great detail in the extended trunk and treats. They showed no. the bright work, and the bright work for the cars back then were all brass. So this is a Lamar colorized photograph of the car, as it would be at the factory. And the bright pieces are all brass. That's a bright work, which is what they were proud of. And we have far more pieces of bright work on it, too. This manual also has performance things, so you know what your horsepower is, your torque, um, all of that stuff. You all have all kinds of specifications. Interesting, it's like Hot Rod Magazine back 100 years before Hot Rod Magazine had that kind of stuff. <laughs> And this is the parts book. We'll just show you a couple of pages. And this is important because when you go on your tours and your, your escapades with your car, it shows you every piece, how each piece comes apart, the makeup of each piece. So you could actually do your own engineering of your automobile and fix it. You could show the blacksmith that you needed some of these or one of those. And you can make that happen. Showing the crankcase, showing the, the crankshaft, all your pieces separate. So you could be really proud from an engineering standpoint of your automobile because nobody's going to have the information on your automobile. There aren't any service centers anywhere. The blacksmith was your best friend. So with that said, we will uh, take him and show him what the engine sounds like and let's take it for a ride. Great. in this merry go round hold on here we go how you feeling oh good good i feel safer in this one already i see i've got a handle there i just want to let people watch that propeller because it's going to go so fast so quickly all of a sudden you're not going to see it as soon as that thing starts to turn like so all of a sudden it becomes invisible <laughs> like that. So how you feel driving it? Oh, good. When's the last time you had it out? A long time, actually. All right, good. It's Five years. Time we had this out again. Yeah. It's overdue. How long did it take you to figure out how to drive this? Um, half an hour, I guess, the first time to get it, to figure it out pretty well. But I've had almost 50 years of owning old cars, so it's the same, although well, there's a difference in the rest of them. So we've got three speeds, manual going forward. Yes, it's a progressive, so it's like a motorcycle, so they're all in line. You have first, second, third going that way, and then you have neutral, and then you have reverse all the way back in one straight shot. It sounds like it's going really well. Yeah, it's warmed up now, good. I want to show those boilers. Yeah, here we so go. This is
<laughs> for me. Not so good for a mountain road. <laughs> yeah. But okay. No auto crossing in this one. So this is the only car in the world with this steering wheel. Well, so, it's, a, it's the only Stevens Durier in the world, and maybe the only car in the world. It was handmade for Mr. Dieter, the first owner of this. Dieter Roots made all the early speedometers and odometers, so it's a big company, important person. Tell me what's on the steering wheel here. What am I looking at? You're looking at timing and hand throttle. Timing and hand throttle. Got it.